Welcome back to Malaysia Life Noding. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at the Voronoi notes in geometry notes. Uh, Benny G actually here have some example already. You can kind of just follow the notes, uh, the note three example from Benny G. So with Voronoi, uh, we know already what Voronoi is. Uh, it's the pattern that looks like a, kind of like a cell. If you start with a cube, for example, and if we use a shader. And we assign a material with a Voronoi. Uh, we have three options: distance, color, and positions. Okay, with the let's take a look. With the distance plug into the base color, we're gonna get this kind of cell-like uh, material. And imagine if it's white and black, and you can kind of displace these objects. You're gonna see the result very soon. We have a color version, just like a cell with random color, and then the positions, which is really interesting. Um, and let's save this very quickly. So this is GM Voronoi. Let's take a look. What's the difference? This is just happening in the shader, and it show up uh, if you are using render. If we use it with with geometry nodes. We have something similar, Voronoi texture, and we're gonna actually uh, displace uh, these objects, uh, the cube. Okay, so let's let's replace this actually with a with another cube. So in this case, we actually lost the material. So a good idea is actually to have another geometry node, and this one I just call it assign material set material so we can get back get back this material so let's uh, yeah set this up to color all right and we can go back to our original cube so we can scale we can adjust the subdivisions we have this Voronoi texture and Let's use this with set position. So we can we can set positions and we can offset the positions, or simply replace the positions with the Voronoi texture. Okay, so this is when things get started starting to get interesting. At first, you think there's a uh, kind of nothing. That's because we haven't got enough subdivisions. Let me increase this to big number. 30 by 30 by 30 so, so we start to see some kind of result and that's uh, this is using the position so the position of the Voronoi is displacing this cube okay so we're gonna try to match the color so we, we understand this a little bit more color plug into the positions color can also be plugged into the offset So we can either we can use either one. Let's unplug this for now so we don't get disrupted by the color too much. Let me try increasing this further. Maybe 50 by 50 by 50. You can see with the position plug into the position, it will actually work across the objects in a in a in a really interesting way. It's it seems like triangulating it, but it's not really. If you use dual mesh, I don't think it will change too much. It's still using the same topology. Um, so let me try by playing with the scale randomness. Now I'm not. I can reduce the randomness or not. Um, let's see if we can make something that's a little bit more interesting if we yeah reduce the number of vertices there we can have like a solid kind of stone that's if I unplug this and plug the color into the offset we have something that looks like a little bit like bismuth uh, but bismuth is more complex maybe we can do something like this in the future um, for now the Benny's with Benny's example he actually okay he started with a cube subdivided in x-axis 
<clears throat> and then the, the normal multiply okay the normal comes in with his example so let's try actually doing that you can actually play around with this and connect it with uh, I mean looking at the shader as well so you understand what's going on with Benny's example he is using the distance to offset the cube so combine XYZ so distance plug into the Z into the offset so this might be <clears throat> a little bit more obvious so we are disru disrupting this based on the scale if I plug this into the distance you can see perhaps the result here is slightly different maybe unplug this one now let's make it 100 by 100 by 100 now you can start to see the the cell like material it's like a wave actually if you use the 4d you have the force dimensions and you can play around with the w the w is for anime animations it's kind of like a it's almost like looping scale we have the scale so we have control over the, the size of the cell we have control over the randomness you can see the randomness normally with Voronoi it's you want you want to have the randomness anyway so you can control the value so it's again with with Benny's example normal multiply scale okay he use multiply and scale after vector math set to multiply so he multiplied the Voronoi with the normal of the cube so the normal multiply so yeah and then he used the scale as well scale vector just to scale <clears throat> the strength of the vector normal so you can have like a bubble bubble or like a cell like inverted bubble so this is what people actually normally use <clears throat> with Voronoi texture I think the scale does not really reflect the ones over here unless if we use the different texture coordinate maybe generated yeah this one I think reflects the one over here inside geometry nodes okay let's uh, so let's continue what what else can we do here Be Benny Benny has some example For example we have five there let's set this to 40 set to five scale to five as well yeah doesn't reflect it 100% anyway so unplug okay <clears throat> this is okay this is pretty cool and we can start to play around with uh, this value we, we want like a nice block of Voronoi uh, Voronoi cube yeah I think this is a good start okay so from here uh, I think with Benny's example he used uh, he used this with remesh which is pretty cool and then also decimate planner is interesting okay remesh and with remesh set to voxel you have this kind of a nice looking piece but you can also use blocked so with the block I believe you can control the octan uh, the oct3 depth and then you can sell, scale it maybe I think Benny use it also with decimate and planar so it's it's reducing the the grid okay into something simple topology wise decimate planner okay that could be really handy so if you use it later with bevel I think 
or subdivide. Oh, yeah, it gets kind of heavy with subdivision surface. Okay, oh no, I should have saved it, I think. Okay. Let's kill this one. Oh, it's finished. Cancel that. Now it's starting to get slightly experimental. Okay, what else did Benny use? This one, in this one, he uses uh, Vorono, uh, Sphere Chop, Sphere Chop to modify the, this value. Could be pretty interesting. Let's try doing that. Actually, I actually kind of like when the position plug into this guy. So we have this really nice looking procedural creations already. I just turn on the cavity so we can see more detail. Okay, and we can create duplicates, right? And then we can give it we can give user some control so we have like a something really nice looking and we can play around with the scale of course and the w so with the w value you can modify using sphere chop so let's pipe this outside using group input same thing with the scale So W and scale is now outside value. And you can modify this very easily using sphere chop. So sphere chop nodes, uh, create new object set, get object. So grab all of this object, get selections, pipe this in. And we want to modify this W. So right click, copy full data path, paste it in. We want to modify the modifier. So this modifier is the W. Okay, we can use random value. Uh, float. random number generator plug into the value size of 4 I think this should do the job you see you see the value is changing and we can just reopen blender and it's gonna update <clears throat> so this can work many many times So if you have like, if you're like in the matrix and you say, okay, Neo, we want some random block of Voronoi displays object. You can do that quite easily. Just reopen. Boom. Okay. We have some random pieces generated uh, using the Voronoi. Um, that's basically the, the basic <laughs> feel free to play around with this yourself I think the Voronoi thing is really powerful it's just there's a lot uh, you can play around with it's like again it's like a cell and it's like a grid sometimes if you reduce the randomness um, it's also quite something Oh, did I get anything? Didn't I use the remesh? Oh, because I need to assign the material at the end. So for all of this, link 
copy the modifier. Boom. They're all looking the same again. But this is a start, okay? Uh, I think there's a lot of things to explore here yourself. Okay, interesting. You can also use this shader to displace this further into into micro displacement, but I like the this geometry. Anyhow, let's reload so Spherechop can randomize the design. Okay, they should all be slightly different now. Yep. The color looks the same, that's why they look the same, but they're actually slightly different. Let's use this with ambient occlusion, maybe it's gonna look a little bit better. But for now, I'm pretty happy with just this. Maybe with the spare chop nodes, we can randomize this value further. There you go. All of them is slightly different using the Voronoi. And you can control the scale, of course. Let's get back to geometry nodes, actually. This scale doesn't need to go outside. I'm gonna reduce this smaller value. Okay, there. Yeah, this is even better. Maybe this is all we need. Random shapes based on the Foronoi displacement. Again, this is the basic. Let's take a look. Okay, with, with Benny example, there's some interesting thing happening there with the whole. I have to look at this. I think he is he used the clamping here with map range. I will try to study this and actually come back. Oops, I just closed Twitter. Anyway, we're gonna probably have another video tutorial just talking about this. Uh, hopefully you find this useful. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.